How's it going, everybody? It's Dono. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why people like and why people hate mumble rap, and it's pretty much for the same reasons. So here's something I started thinking about recently, which is basically, you know, what is it that people like about mumble rap, right? I, I personally don't like it much, but, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a large portion of the genre at the moment. So, um... I did a little bit of thinking and digging around and uh, these are the reasons I think people actually like mumble rap and, and the reasons that people hate it. And kind of surprisingly, they fall into sort of the same camp, right? It's some of the same reasons. So I think one of the top reasons for me, at least, is obviously if you, you watch this channel, you know that I care a lot about lyricism or that's something that I'm, I'm really involved in. And in fact, you know, that's probably the main thing that I do more so even than music at all is just like focus on lyrics um, and that's one of the things that I think people really don't like about mumble rap is it's sort of perceived to have a lower level of lyricism. Most of the songs I've listened to when I hear some of the lyrics pop out, um, they're just completely incoherent or just like metaphors and similes that are extremely basic or just bad. You know, they don't actually seem to fit together well at all. Uh, but I think that's actually one of the reasons that people tend to like it as well is that I am amazed by the number of people who listen to music, especially rap music, without listening to the lyrics, right? They don't care what the lyrics are. They're just listening to the music. Um, and I think that kind of segues nicely into another thing that people tend to like is that the beats on a lot of these songs are really good, really strong beats. Whereas in a lot of the more lyrical rap, the beats are toned back a bit. Not always, not always, but uh, there is a, a bunch of songs where the beats are a little bit more mellow to let the lyricism stand out more. So when you have something that's more musical and musically focused, for the people who don't care that much about lyrics, then they have more of a chance to listen to the music and the music is more compelling. Because uh, I've met quite a few people who have, have trouble with some of the like really lyrically heavy but musically light songs, which are some of the ones that I like the most. Another thing I noticed for the like category uh, for mumble rap is that there are a lot of people and sort of some psychology around the idea of being able to understand things and around repetition being sort of catchy and uh, repetition, the more times you, you experience something, the more likely you are to like it for the majority of people. And a lot of these songs have really simple, really repetitive lyrics, really simple, really repetitive hooks. So you're, you're getting these same sorts of sounds or motions over and over again and for a lot of people it's sort of like a hypnotic type of state right that familiarity breeds a sort of liking because you hear it so much now for people like me I, and you know this goes back to the hate category like absolutely hate that it is so frustrating to me or like just not entertaining to me to hear the same thing over and over and over again it, it, it drives me nuts but i think again that's one of the sort of divides between the people who who really like it and those who don't Another major piece sort of in the same vein is a lot of this music has the same flow or artists will use the same flow. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of variation within a song, uh, within uh, an artist, within the entire subgenre, right? A lot of these flows are really, really consistent. And I think that goes back to sort of this familiarity piece um, for people who, who enjoy that, right? All the songs kind of sounding the same but with uh, sort of different beats is nice to them. Whereas for people like me, all the songs sounding the same is atrocious. Like I, I hate that there's never, you know, a switch up in flow or anything. They all sort of sound the same. Um, in, again, in that same vein, really high levels of autotune. I guess there are people who are okay listening to autotune. To me personally, I hate that sound. It, it doesn't matter even if, you know, the lyrics were, were really, really good and deep and meaningful and powerful uh, I, I just can't stand listening to auto-tune. So, um, in that same thing though, you know, when all the songs are auto-tuned, the voices all start to sound more similar and more coherent and more cohesive. Um, so if you're not looking for sort of this like wide display of different, uh, lyricisms and flows and, and emotions, right? It kind of sucks that out too. There's a lot of, um, in this genre, a lot of just like kind of flat sort of delivery, um, that stuff for a certain type of person can be really enjoyable, 
but for people who have liked you know some of the stuff that was really popular in the past or some of the stuff that's considered um you know golden out of the past years or whatever that's not nearly as enjoyable another piece that i think sort of falls into this is because of a lot of those pieces right the lyricism is a lot less complex there's a lot more repetition so there's just less lyrics overall uh, the flows don't get changed as much there's a lot of auto-tune all of those things together are all pieces uh, that historically rappers have worked on to sort of build their skills so when you take a lot of that out the perception is that it's a much lower skilled uh, set of rappers right because you know if you're not working on your ly lyricism you're not working on your flow you're not working on your delivery then what is it that you are working on and i think for a lot of people it rubs them the wrong way so all in all i just i, I don't have any like perspective that i'm trying to push or anything that i'm you know trying to make anyone believe um as i've sort of aged in experiencing music and whatnot i used to be really judgmental around like oh this stuff sucks this is horrible i don't know anyone listens to this no one should listen to this and I've, I've morphed into sort of a place of like trying to sort of distinguish what are the different elements that people like and dislike because first of all all that judgment is not really useful right it doesn't do anything for me to be an old man and try to poo poo you know whatever music people like and for the record i was doing this the entire time that i enjoyed music right is there was certain subgenres that were less lyrical that i would just wonder like why does anyone listen to this but what's way more useful is to pick apart the different components and see what types of audiences that people are appealing to because that's going to be more useful for you as you try to develop your own music or uh, even listen to music and see what it is that you like and dislike so that you can find more of what you like and I thought this was a prime example of you know there are people out there who are listening to music in a way that's so different from me and I think a lot of people in this genre have had that reaction. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that like uh, all subgenres or most subgenres, but I think it's something really useful uh, to start picking apart. So, as a challenge, I would like to say, like, go look at one of the subgenres that you don't like and start picking apart why. It doesn't mean you have to listen to a ton of the music, but just having a deeper understanding of some of the elements can be really useful. So, that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully that helped you kind of understand a little bit what people might like or dislike about mumble rap. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, topics you want me to cover, throw them down in the box below. I'll get to them as soon as I can, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to like and subscribe as it really helps. I've also got a second channel, How to Happy, which focuses on health and well-being. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.